But we had to add the other ingredient, and specifically after 9-11 occurred, regardless of how you believe it happened or who did it, we needed to tweak this program, and I did that. And so I devote the first hour to hard news, breaking issues, with a coast-to-coast Alex Jones-type flair to it. I don't want to do what mainstream does. You know, I don't want to... By, by the time I'm on the air, that stuff's been beaten like a horse. And, and I don't want to go in that direction, but we will cover those topics. But I, I think governments are taking a very close look at all kinds of things right now, including a kill switch for the Internet, because they saw what happened in Egypt. And I think these are very dangerous, very dangerous times for us. Well, sure, I agree with you, but you talk about imbalance. When we have J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs knowingly creating trillions in derivatives, knowing it's worthless, selling it to people, then demanding taxpayer money for it, when you have the government trying to shut down power plants in the U.S. Uh, and then building and uh, power plants in China, and we're having rolling blackouts, when we have the imbalance of all of this corruption, uh, obviously people are going to get angry. They're going to get upset and try to bring balance back to that and... Speaking of what's happening to the economy worldwide, I mean, every economist I have on says we're already in a depression and we have incredible unemployment. But uh, where do you see the economy going? Where do you see uh, the globalist uh, you know, pushing this? Alex, let me tell you something. I have never seen a situation where more people were so destitute or in trouble in all my life. I mean, uh, personally, I'm helping my three children with their mortgages and their car payments because they're my kids. You know, I, I, I can't see them tossed out. Um, you know, they've got some problems financially, as most Americans do right now. I have had friends call me asking for $1,000 or $2,000 that they say, I want to borrow. Now, you know, when you lend money to a friend, you're not getting it back. It's gone. And so you do it. But I've never seen a situation where more people were so backed up and it's not like they're going to bars every night and, you know, going out to party with them. And the stuff. media is telling us everything's great, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is what's happening. Those of us who are working, you and me and other people, are doing okay. We're paying our bills. We're buying things once in a while. We're keeping the economy going. I mean, the automobile sales in the U.S. have gone up. People who are working are spending their money and they're doing okay. But the number of people who aren't working and who aren't okay continues to grow dramatically. And here's the problem. When you create a society between the haves and the have-nots, when that disparity begins to get wider and wider and wider, we are going to have a disaster. What is happening in Egypt can happen here. Amazing. George Norrie is our guest. We'll continue. We're going to do 15, 20 minutes of calls in the next hour for George. Specific questions for him, 800-259-9231. Stay with us. A lot more coming up. George Norrie is our guest, and I want to get more into where he sees this economy going, uh, the loss of liberty, the TSA putting up telescreens in 9,000 locations saying spy on your neighbor. So much of what he's been talking about for decades on radio and what I've been talking about for 16 years is now unfortunately unfolding, and so the credibility of people that cover these type of subjects is really going up. Uh, but but before we get into that and then come back and take calls, George, for 15, 20 minutes of the next hour, tell us about your books. Tell us about your radio show. Tell us about Coast to Coast uh, AM uh, for folks that uh, may not routinely tune in because, you know, they, they've got to work during the day. They can always subscribe to Streamlink and listen whenever they want like I do on my iPhone. Oh, we love Streamlink. It only costs, but if you can believe this, 25 cents a day. But, uh, you know, they can get downloads, podcasting, and it's really an exciting facet of listening to the program, along with your terrestrial radio station, which has really been the staple of Coast to Coast over all these years. Uh, it continues to grow, Alex. Just yesterday I signed an extension taking me through 2013, and the network at the same time said, hey, sometime this year, let's talk about a five-year extension beyond that. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to end up being the Casey Kasem of radio. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to just hang in there as long as I can, bringing everybody the truth. We've got a couple books out. My partner for writing, Bill Burns, who does an incredible job uh, doing 
percent of the legwork for these things. Um, worker in the light and journey to the light. Uh, the worker, of course, being the first one in journey. And I've got another one coming out in the fall with Rosemary Ellen Guiley called Talking to the Dead, which is more like the old traditional coast-to-coast -coast show. But, you know, I, I, I've got a twofold goal, and that is, one, stay healthy, because um, I had a lot of problems, you know, 10 years ago, and I, I didn't eat right, and I did stupid stuff, and I decided, you know what, enough is this. And I got into a major workout regimen and uh, eating properly and taking natural supplements. And I hope to God we can continue, continue to take natural supplements. But that's the direction I'm going. Oh, and, yeah, you're uh, in great shape. Uh, and, and expanding on that, George, uh, you also have done quite a few national TV shows on Sci-Fi Channel and others. I mean, you're, you're doing a lot. Yeah, I am. Henry Winkler, the Fonz, approached us uh, a couple months ago. And he would like to do a Twilight Zone type show and said, look, I want you to be Rod Sterling. So let's see what he works on. But, you know, the, the bottom line here is I want this program to succeed. I want you to succeed for people. I'm going to tell you a funny story. When you, as you know, I go back and forth between St. Louis and Los Angeles. You know, I, my family's in St. Louis, so I have a chance to go see my kids, my soon-to-be six godchildren. And we, we just built this little facility in Hawaii, by the way, that uh, I can pop up there and do a show out of there, too. It gives us that flavor way out there. But I, I'm at my favorite restaurant in St. Louis called the Cafe Napoli. And I'm sitting there, I sit in the corner, and a guy comes in, and he's staring at me. And I'm going, oh, boy, here we go. And a young guy, his name's Corey, and he comes up to me, and he goes, oh, my God, it's you. And, uh, and I said, I figured, oh, I'll sign an autograph. I always do that. Or if they want a picture, I'll do that. You know, it's for you. I don't charge for that stuff. I'm not like some of the baseball players. And, and he comes up to me and he goes, my God, it's you. It's you. And I said, yeah. I put out my hand and he went, God, I love Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I went, hey, what? And hey, I, I get the same thing all the time. But, you know, George, that's what I love about you. You reach more people than anybody in the world on any media outlet in a single day except for Rush Limbaugh. I mean, there's no doubting that. And you are such a humble, nice, friendly guy, especially in person when we've gone out, you know, to eat before and been able to hang out with you and, uh, of course, Tom Danheiser. Uh, George Norrie, you know, most radio talk show hosts are pretty arrogant. And uh, most of them don't have other radio talk show hosts on their show. But George has myself on and many other talk show hosts because he's such a confident guy and he's into the information. Back in one minute. Coasttocoastam.com. It's George Norrie. And you know, with few guests, do I thank them and, you know, kind of butter them up. But I, I really owe George a lot because I really want to reach people. I want to warn folks about corrupt things that are happening. I get angry about being oppressed. And he's the biggest outlet to ever just give me free reign and to reach 16 million people a night. And I've been on the show probably 60, 70 times. I haven't, I haven't counted it in the last seven and a half years. And he took a risk putting Alex Jones on him. And we were growing exponentially way back then. Uh, but uh, now it just supercharged us like nitrous oxide on a, on a drag racer. And I just want to thank you again, George, uh, for uh, helping me get the word out. Well, Alex, you earned your way on the coast to coast. When I started doing the program, I didn't know who you were. You know, I was in the, the paranormal, the unusual. And I kept getting emails from people saying, you ought to put talk show host Alex Jones on it. Well, at that point, brand new, just replaced Art Bell, Mr. Competitive here, doing what I'm doing. I'm going, God, what do I want to promote another talk show host for? But I started getting more and more and more of these emails. And I said, you know what, I better start listening to this guy. So I Googled you. Up came PrisonPlanet.com, InfoWars.com. I started listening to some of the things you did. And I said, I like this guy. And I said, you know, he's like a little brother to me. And uh, I, I said, you know, he, the things he says are right on. And then you and I had that first program, and um, it just exploded our phone lines. And that's been our relationship ever ever since, other than when you pushed me into a lake in <laughs> Austin, Texas. Hey, you got to <laughs> stop with that joke. I've had people come up to me on the street and go, why'd you push George Norrie into the pond? And I'm like, I did on YouTube. It, I, I don't know. I think if you just go into the search on YouTube and go Norrie Falls, you'll see a seven-second clip coming out of the radio station, KLBJ at night, you, me, Dan Heiser, and I hit what I thought was a half-inch puddle of water. They had the sprinklers going on all night, 
and I hit a half-inch pool of water that ended up being two feet deep. And I went right down into it and right on my face. And I had that big event, as you know, the talk fest. The next day, I didn't have any backup clothes. I was soaked to the gills. And Dan Heister had to go out and buy me clothes. I'm in my hotel room, stark naked, waiting for him to get in there with new shoes, pants, and a shirt. And down come the window washers. They come right down to my level, and I'm standing right in front of them. No clothes on, and the guy just keeps cleaning the window. No big deal. Well, I just want to say, we just played the video, and I am a good eight feet from you when you fall down. It's Dan Heiser that's sure, behind you. Sure, Harvey Oswald. Sure, you're eight feet away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've only got one more segment with you, but it's a long segment, 12 minutes or so. We're going to go talk to Henry, Al, Bell, Noel, and Tony. Quick questions or comments for George Norrin when we come back uh, in this next segment. But uh, what's coming up tonight on Coast to Coast AM? What's coming up uh, in, in the next few days? First hour, we'll talk a little bit about Egypt and some other mainstream issues with that coast flavor. And then the full show, a little more coasty tonight as we talk with Dr. Richard Boylan about what he believes to be anti-UFO machines that are flying around all over the planet. So we'll get into that with them. And then Friday, I always dedicate it to some fun, unusual things. We're going to be talking to the people from Ripley's Believe It or Not, and then we'll have open lines uh, later on in the program on Friday night out. We've only got about a minute, but what did you think of uh, that strange UFO over the Dome of the Rock in the Jerusalem? Dome of the Rock. Bizarre timing. I mean, things are happening. They're weird. Now, in this particular case, I don't know if it's a sign from above or whether someone's got some drone out there just checking things out. Who knows? But I'm telling you, we get some bizarre things. The strangest story, of course, is the crop formation in Indonesia. Indonesia! I mean, the farmer said he was there six hours before and there was nothing there. You can't make it that fast, even with... 90 people. It makes no sense. Yeah, I think they're really gearing up for a fake type UFO invasion. We know under Project Bluebeam that's there as well. And they've got this Battle of Los Angeles coming out. I mean, they're really pushing it. Uh, George Norrie is our guest, coasttocoastam.com. Our sites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. We'll be right back after this quick break with your phone calls. Stay with us.